Everyone knows that a massive space rock slammed into the Earth millions of years ago, wiping out the dinosaurs. Researchers have been able to create a new timeline using advanced technology that shows what actually transpired. Not only that, but they believe they know where the massive asteroid came from. Is Earth about to be hit by another massive space asteroid? And if so, would we be strong enough to survive? What NASA astronauts recently uncovered will likely amaze and shock you, so get ready to witness the tragedy that nearly wiped out life on Earth. It was terrible enough that a massive asteroid slammed into shallow waters in the Gulf of Mexico 65 million years ago. Then came a slew of other disasters. Rocks rained from the sky, flames erupted, and tsunamis flooded distant shorelines. The researchers discovered that the Cenozoic's first day was littered with cataclysms and published a fresh record of this chaotic day in proceedings of the National Academy of Science. High-resolution photography, microscopy, computed tomography imaging, and magnetic measurements of hundreds of feet of sedimentary rock, newly retrieved from Chicxulub, one of the largest impact craters on Earth, were used to create their timeline. This is how it all started. Consider yourself in North America 65 million years ago when dinosaurs controlled the Earth, and you're gazing up at the night sky. You undoubtedly notice what appeared to be a bright star off in the sky. However, if you stared at this strange light for an hour or two, the object would appear to brighten but scarcely move. Not a star, but a massive asteroid between 11 and 80 kilometers broad, 7 to 50 miles, on a direct intercept trajectory with the Earth at 72,420 kilometers per hour, 45,000 miles per hour. Hours later, the asteroid slams into the Earth's atmosphere, crashing into the Yucatan Peninsula. Earth's atmosphere flows like water when hit at that speed. Smaller space rocks, known as meteors, collide with the atmosphere like stones in a pond and decelerate fast at high altitudes, burning away from friction, while larger pieces of rock survive and fall to Earth. The mountain-sized Chicxulub asteroid, on the other hand, slams into our atmosphere like a boulder into a pool. It kept its speed and crashed through 60 miles of atmosphere in under three seconds, the asteroid screeches over Central America, unleashing the mother of all sonic bombs that will shatter eardrums around the globe. The dinosaurs were probably terrified and fleeing in all directions, unaware of what was going to happen, but any animal that got close enough to witness the asteroid would have been destroyed in minutes. Except for sea turtles and crocodiles, no four-legged mammal weighing more than 25 kilos would be able to survive. The mountain-sized giant asteroid is falling at such a fast rate that the air can't escape. The air heats up to thousands of degrees in seconds when compressed. Much of the shallow sea that covers the Yucatan is vaporized before the asteroid even crashes. Milliseconds later, the rock smacks into bedrock after plunging through what's left. A chain reaction of events occurs at that time. So much pressure is exerted on the Earth by the asteroid impact that soil and rock flow like liquid. The Earth's flowing up and down movement resembles the double splash of a cannonball in a pool. The initial splash is followed by a delayed vertical splash when the asteroid's cavity returns to the surface. At the time of impact, the first wall of Earth shattered outward was more than 32 kilometers 20 miles tall. The asteroid impact nearly enters the Earth's mantle. As the cavity rebounds to form the delayed vertical splash, the Earth rises at a rate of over 1,600 kilometers per hour. 1,000 miles per hour, reaching heights greater than Mount Everest. Within minutes, a sequence of additional explosions nearly completely collapses this mountain of debris, leaving behind a smaller mound known as a crater's peak ring. The kinetic energy of a 7.5 billion ton rock traveling at 16 kilometers per second, 10 miles per second, is converted into sweltering heat in an instant as the asteroid reaches the Yucatan and applies pressure to the bedrock. The energy delivered by the Chicxulub impactor is roughly 1 septillion, 300 sextillion kilojoules. It has the same amount of energy as a billion Hiroshima atomic bombs. The asteroid's kinetic energy excites the molecules to temperatures significantly higher than the sun's surface. The heat rips electrons from atoms, ionizing the air and transforming it into an expanding firestorm of plasma with temperatures in excess of 10,000 degrees that is supercharged with vaporized rock and blasted at hypersonic speeds. The impact shocked wave, along with the heated, rapidly expanding air and near-instantaneous conversion of the Earth to gas, 
creates a gigantic blast wave of pressure that expands outward at more than 1,600 kilometers per hour, 1,000 miles per hour. The blast wave from this asteroid would melt you in Texas, deafen you in New York, and break out glass and windows in Buenos Aires if it were impacted in the same area today. The Chicxulub impactor reverberates around the planet like a bell. Waves in the Earth's crust travel at a speed of 4 kilometers per second, 2.5 miles per second, away from the impact zone. These waves subsequently cause fault-slipping earthquakes all around the world. You would feel the ground shaking 30 minutes after impact if you were on the other side of the Earth. Tsunamis as high as skyscrapers are triggered by the impact. Within an hour, the first of them impacted the Gulf Coasts. Waves up to a thousand feet high slam on to what is now Mexico and the southern United States, flooding tens of miles inland. The waves reverse the course of rivers for a short time, surging up riverbeds like 30-foot tidal bores. Tsunamis slam against the eastern coast of the United States generating 600-foot-high walls of water that slam into Europe, Africa, and the Mediterranean coasts six hours later. Waves hit every shoreline on the Earth within 15 hours of impact. Depending on the terrain of the area, the ocean sweeps anything in its path away and draws it back into the sea as the water goes down. Even though it already sounds like Armageddon, more tragedies are on the road. When the large rock hits, it launches 25 trillion tons of Earth into ballistic trajectories, some of which exceed Earth's escape velocity. These stones escaped Earth's gravitational pull to orbit the Sun in one of two ways, with some of the material likely reaching the Moon. The majority of the blasted material, however, returned to Earth within an hour. These glass-like chunks, known as tektites, pelt the Earth in lethal quantities at speeds ranging from 160 to 320 kilometers per hour, 100 to 200 miles per hour. Some are as large as buses, but the majority are the size of marbles. This scorching hailstorm struck any last dinosaurs on Earth, regardless of where they were on the planet. The glass bullets, on the other hand, didn't have to hit the dinosaurs to kill them. When these tektites collide with the atmosphere, they release enough thermal radiation to start flames all across the world. According to some estimations, the combined heat of the returning embers heats the planet to the temperature of a broiling oven. The majority of the world's trees burn, which may explain why only ground-nesting bird species survive. Almost all of the larger land species that have survived extinction have some means of evading the heat. They could either dig like small mammals, snakes, and lizards, or swim like crocodiles and turtles. Even if the poor dinosaurs were on the other side of the Earth, they would have needed to find shelter from the first heat wave. Chicxulub strikes an area rich in oil and sulfur, bringing the dinosaurs' bad luck to an end. The impact ejects 100 billion tons of vaporized sulfur and 30,000 quadrillion gallons of water into the atmosphere which condenses into huge cloud storms and showers acid rain, acidifying the oceans. Continental-wide snowstorms deposit tens of feet of snow every day at higher latitudes. But, in addition to water, Chicxulub vaporizes and ejects 150 football stadiums worth of oil from the Yucatan bedrock. The oil condenses as a black, sooty layer in the stratosphere, coating the Earth like a coat of black paint. Carbon, unlike sulfur and wildfire smoke, circulates well above the cloud layer, preventing it from falling down. And that creates even another major issue. For at least two to three years, the soot layer lingers in the atmosphere, decreasing the quantity of sunlight that reaches the Earth's surface by 90%. The returning xenoliths provide an initial oven-like heat, which is followed by a deep and long-lasting frost. The average global temperature drops by about 50 degrees. Madagascar, India, and Indonesia, which were tropical islands at the time, were the only regions on Earth to dodge the deep frost. During the global freeze, evaporation practically stops, resulting in an 80% reduction in rainfall. Outside of these tropical islands, nearly every area on the planet has turned into a desert. Where did this giant rock originate from, and is there another one on our way? Using data from known asteroids, scientists use a computer to study asteroid evolution. The Chicxulub asteroid, according to Avi Loeb and Amir Sira, came from the Oort Cloud, a sphere of junk near the solar system's boundary. 
It could have been a much larger comet thrown off course by Jupiter's gravitational field and smashed into many fragments as it approached the Sun. Once every 250 to 730 million years, these particles may cross Earth's orbit and strike the planet. According to this research, it's not a question of whether, but when we'll be hit by another massive object from space. A 330-meter-long asteroid called 4660 Nereus blasted past Earth at a speed of 6.5 kilometers per second, 14,719 miles per hour, on Saturday, December 11, 2021, according to NASA. While this may not appear to be a close approach, any little change in its orbit could send it on a collision course with humanity in the future. Astronomers are watching this possibly deadly object, which will pass within 1.1 million kilometers, 745,000 miles of Earth, on February 14, 2060. Purchase your flowers and make your proposals as soon as possible. Keep in mind that the asteroid responsible for the 2013 explosion in Chelyabinsk, Russia, was only 20 meters in diameter. The bad news is that we have no way of defending the Earth against a giant space asteroid. However, NASA's DART mission, or Double Asteroid Redirection Test, will examine if a spacecraft can drive independently to a target asteroid and smash with it, generating a kinetic impact that could deflect the asteroid off a collision trajectory with the Earth. Dimorphos is a small asteroid that circles Didymos, a larger asteroid. When the Didymos system is 11 million kilometers, 7 million miles from Earth, the spaceship is scheduled to arrive in late September 2022. The moonlit speed is expected to be altered by 1% as a result of the collision. Stopping a 10-kilometer broad or larger asteroid speeding towards the Earth at more than 72,000 kilometers per second would need a lot more than a small spacecraft crashing into it. Possibly the world would have to resort to nuclear weapons, like in the movie Armageddon. Maybe you'll become renowned if you come up with a way to halt a world-ending asteroid. Please let us know what you think and stay tuned for more exciting news from our universe. Thank you for your time and attention.